Uh, my name is Eddie Zhang, and I'm here with Eric Lee, Sonica Patil, and Johnny Wu. And today we'll be presenting evolutionary game theory. Uh, so what is game theory, first of all? So game theory is the study of certain strategies and decisions chosen by people, and it, it incorporates statistical models which can produce different outcomes. Uh, and basically, evolutionary game theory is the biological use of game theory, and it is used to study uh, evolution of populations and the behavior of respective populations. It was introduced by R.A. Fisher, and I'll, I will be running. Oh my God, sorry, sorry, sorry. My Adobe Flash, oh, okay, okay, okay. 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 Hi, we are the GOATs. Uh, my name is Eddie Zhang, and I'm here with Eric Lee, Sonica Patil, and Johnny Wu, and today we'll be presenting to you evolutionary game theory. Uh, so what is game theory? Game theory is a study of certain strategies and decisions chosen by people, and it incorporates statistical models which produce different outcomes. Uh, evolutionary game theory is based off game theory, and it is the use of game theory bio biologically towards studying the evolution of different populations and looking at the behavior of uh, individuals within the population. It was introduced by Ari Fisher, and today I will be talking about two different examples of evolutionary game theory, which is Hawk versus Dove and Rock, Paper, Scissors. So Hawk versus Dove is a famous model that incorporates two players in a payoff matrix, and it runs through uh, players as either a hawk or a dove, and this breakdown of what happens when which player is what. So when player one and player two are both doves, there's a payoff of one half B minus C with B standing for benefit from gaining resources such as food and water. And C stands for like fighting or combat between the two. Uh, since it is a hog versus a hawk, it isn't directly beneficial because they will compete over resources such as territory. Uh, the second scenario is player one is a hawk and player two as a dove, which has a payoff of B, which means it's completely beneficial. And this makes sense since a uh, hawk completely benefits over dove. And uh, the third scenario is player one as a dove and player two as a hawk, which has a payoff of zero, uh, which, is, which makes sense because a dove never wins against a hawk, which means that player one receives zero benefit. And finally, um, player one and player two as both doves, which has a mutual payoff, and it is the best strategy for both parties, but it's unrealistic because as soon as there's, for example, one hawk, uh, the hawk will take over like the dove and it won't be as realistic. Show by the graph. Um, real life rock, paper, scissors, sorry about that. So uh, this is a, there's a model based off rock, paper, scissors and it's shown through three color morphs of the side black lizard. Uh, so the orange stoat morph is the most aggressive morph that mates with many females, uh, sorry, over a large territory. A blue throat morph mates with one female and protects that female at all costs against sneakers. And finally, the yellow throat morph is known as the sneaker and it's the least aggressive morph that sneaks into a uh, large territory to, to mate with females. So the orange counters the blue, the blue counters the yellow, and the yellow counters the orange. And it's basically a real life example of rock, paper, scissors. One example of altruistic behavior that doesn't necessarily stem from just pure psychology is the prisoner's dilemma. In the prisoner's dilemma, you're introduced to prisoners, A and B, who are offered a choice. They can either betray the other person or they can cooperate with the other person. If A and B both betray each other, each of them serves two years in prison. If A betrays B, but B remains silent, then A will be set free and B will serve three years in prison and vice versa. However, if A and B both remain silent, both of them will serve only one year in prison on the lesser charge. Now, this shows many different sets of strategies. One of these strategies is cooperating, where A always say silence. Another is defect, which A always betrays. There is also another popular strategy known as tit for tat, where in multiple iterations of the game, A will betray B whenever B cooperates with A and vice versa. However, one of the most effective strategies shown here is actually random because of its unpredictability. Depending on the ratio of people and depending on how many prisoners there are in the simulation, a lot of these different strategies can balance out. But in the end, a lot of the altruistic behavior survives. Another popular thought experiment to explain selective altruism is the Greenbeard altruism theory. 
And this originates from the quote, I have a green beard and I will be altruistic to anyone with a green beard. The green beard effect essentially occurs when in an illicit A, a perceptive trait, in this case, a physical green beard, two, recognition of this trait by others, and three, preferential treatment of individuals with the trait. Now, in this thought experiment, this will typically result in cooperations within people with green beards, while it would also create ostracism of others. However, this type of genetic behavior is also dangerous because there are mutations that can occur that produce this green beard altruistic trait without the altruistic behavior essentially leashing off of the other green beards. So in this kind of a sense, altruistic behavior can be explained over traditional theory of selfishness of genes and survival of the fittest. Some of the equations that are used to model different types of relationships in the wild are lotka volterial equations. These are also known as the predator pair equations, which are a pair of first order nonlinear differential equations. These are used to describe di the dynamics of biological systems where a predator and a prey interacts, where X is the number of prey, Y is the number of predators, dy, dt, and dx, dt represent the instantaneous growth rates of those two populations, and alpha, beta, gamma, and delta are parameters that describe their interactions. As you can see from the top right graph, you can see that the populations between the predator and the prey are going up and down in a cyclical nature. This shows a necessity for a balance of these types of populations, and if one population should fall, so will the other. Another important aspect of evolutionary game theory is ESS, which means evolutionary stable strategy. And this concept was introduced in 1972 by John Maynard Smith and George R. Price. And this is when a strategy cannot be replaced or invaded by any other strategy through natural selection. And ESS is a subset or an equilibrium refinement of the Nash equilibrium. Um, and it differs based on motivation. Um, the Nash equilibrium is based on the cognitive abilities and divisions of the players. And it is often thought that um, the players have a preconceived notion of how the game is going to work compared to ESS, which is when they choose their strategy based on biologically encoded and um, irritable information. Um, and there's two conditions that relate to ESS. One is the strict Nash equilibrium, and this specifies that the strategy is a Nash equilibrium, as ESS is a subset of um, the Nash equilibrium. And number two, the Maynard Smith second condition. And the second condition means that although strategy A is neutral with respect to the payoff against strategy B, the population of players who continue to play strategy B um, have an advantage when playing against A. Um, mutations introduce new variations from time to time, introducing the concept of long-term evolution. And since mutations take longer to take effect into an environment, a new time scale is introduced. Um, and when you look at evolutionary game theory, there's two time scales, short-term and long-term evolution. And along with these two, two time scales are two stabilities, internal and external. Internal stability is when it goes against issues in the frequency within a resident population. And external stability is when it goes against invasions by a mutant morph. And in a, in a monomorphic population with external stability, it is considered an ESS, which is the evolutionary stable strategy, since no foreign or different strategy can invade in that situation. And I'll talk about spatial game model and how is it used to explain an aspect of evolutionary game theory. Geographical factors in evolution include gene flow and horizontal gene transfer. Spatial game models represent geometry by putting contestants in the lattice of cells. Contests take place only with immediate neighbors, and winning strategies is to take over these immediate neighbors and then interact with other adjacent neighborhoods. This, this model is useful in showing how pockets of cooperators can invade and introduce autism in prisoner's dilemma game. Spatial structure is sometimes abstract into general network of interactions. This is the foundation of evolutionary graph theory. The graph shown in the lower right are the dynamics of a hot dog contest 
showing hawk and dove contestants, as well as the change of strategy taking place in various cells. Okay, next slide. And also we have complex interactions in the real natural world. We discussed about interactions between two species before, but in fact, there are more players involved in an ecosystem. We also mainly focused on symmetric models before, and the payoffs for the two species are identical in that case. However, there are more asymmetric competitions in natural environment. The payoffs are different for the two groups of animals. In an ecosystem, there are holders and invaders of the land, and they make different choices in a competition. Holders of the land are more likely to protect and take less risk. Invaders of the land are more likely to be more rational about their cho choices and be more competitive. There are also cheating behaviors in the natural environment. When a certain member is not contributing to the group, um, only when the partner's trade was fidelity and the corporation can merge in ESS, as shown in a graph B here. Okay, that's all of our presentation. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Thank you.